news from around the globe. Hot, fresh, balanced and objective. On Unity. Hello and welcome to News Hour on UNT TV. Today is Thursday, 18th of May 2023 and it's equivalent to 28th of Shawwal 1444 after Hijra. The headlines. Pro-presidency, officials and ministers, Matawale, there's EFCC, Plead two killings, police arrest five suspects to cover arms. Dogwa withdraws from speakership, race, bags, a bars. And on the foreign scene, Russia launches ninth Kiev air attack this month. And in sports, Man City more Real Madrid to reach Champions League final. And those were the headlines. And for details and more of the stories, I am Rukayet Sani Ibrahim. Barely three days after returning from a medical trip to London, the United Kingdom President Mahmoud Bari will on Friday inaugurate the presidential VIP wing of the State House Medical Center, Abuja. A statement signed by the State House Director of Information, Abiodun Oladun Joye, said on Wednesday, according to the statement titled President Buhari to inaugurate presidential VIP wing of State House Medical Center on Friday. The hospital built on 2,485 square meters is a specialized intensive care center to cater for the president, vice president, their immediate families and other VIPs. The hospital has a specialized x-ray suit equipped with a digital x-ray machine as well as a diagnostic suit and compressing MRI, CT scan and endoscopy facilities. Built for 21 billion naira, the VIP wing also showcases a catheterization laboratory, two operating rooms for regular procedures and special procedures such as organ transplants. The outgoing governor of Zamfara State, Bella Matoale, has asked the Antigraph Agency EFCC to probe officers of the presidency and members of the Federal Executive Council, FEC, officials of the presidency, including the president, vice president, and some other aides appointed by the president, while FEC members include the President, Vice President and Ministers. Mr. Matole said this in a public statement wherein he questioned the motive of the EFCC for investigating outgoing governors. Mr. Matole will cease to be governor on 29th of May having lost his re-election bid. Governors enjoy immunity from prosecution and the EFCC is believed to be ready to intensify the investigation of outgoing governors including Mr. Matole with a view to prosecution. In his statement, Mr. Matole also accused the EFCC chairman, Abdul Rashid Bawa, of corruption, saying he has evidence against him. The EFCC had yet to react to Mr. Matole's statement as at the time of filing this report. The federal government has said Governor Bello Matole of Zomfra State is exercising his freedom of expression by saying that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, should extend its investigation to the presidency and the outgoing ministers. Governor Matole has dared the EFCC chairman, Abdul Rashid Bawa, to go after President Mahmoud Bari's cabinet members and stop castigating governors and beam its searchlight on the presidency and members of the Federal Executive Council. We ask the EFCC boss to ensure the commission investigation must be holistic and not selective. But the federal government, in its reaction through the Minister of Information and Culture, Al Haji Laye Muhammad, said the governor expressed his personal opinion. Asked to respond to the comment, he said the governor has the right to make suggestions, saying that, in, saying that, is his own opinion. The majority leader of the House of Representatives, Ado Dogwa, has resigned from the race for the 10th House and endorsed Tajuddin Abbas. Dogwa led two other aspirants, Abubakar Maiki and Tunji Olawiyu, to withdraw from the race on Wednesday during a meeting organized by the Joint Tax Group. It will be that the ruling APC endorsed Abbas and Ben Kalu for the Speaker and Deputy Speaker positions, causing protests among aspirants. Dogwa had earlier joined some other aspirants to form a coalition to challenge Abbas. However, in a surprise twist, he has now pulled out. In his speech, he stated that he cannot go against the party. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Semik Bajabi Amila, has expressed regret over his support for a forum that championed the emergence of Aminu Tambol as Speaker of the House in the 7th National Assembly. Tambol is now an outgoing two-term governor of Sokoto State. Bajabi Amila stated this while recalling the previous attempts by speakership aspirants to oppose the choosing candidates of their respective parties. The Speaker made this remark in Abuja on Wednesday night during a meeting of the Joint Tax 10th Assembly. 
the coalition of members elect from the All Progressive Congress and Opposition Parties for the upcoming 10th National Assembly. During the meeting, the coalition adopted Tajuddin Abbas and Benjamin Kalu as anointed candidates of the APC for the positions of Speaker and Deputy Speaker respectively for the 10th House. The Plateau State Police Command yesterday said it has arrested five persons and recovered an AK-47 rifle, a pistol and cartridges in connection with an attack launched on Tuesday morning in two villages in Mongo local government. In a statement, the spokesperson of the command, DSP Alabo Alfred, said the arrest suspects were in the custody of Operation Safe Heaven, the security tax force maintaining peace in the state. He explained that while engaging the attackers, a soldier, CPL Abdullahi Omar, sustained bullet injuries and the two Hilux vans belonging to NSCDC were vandalized by the attackers. The People's Democratic Party, PDP and the Labour Party, LP, on Wednesday expressed anger over the telephone conversation between the United States Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, and the President-elect Bola Tinubu. Blinken pledged stronger ties between the U.S. and Nigeria during a 20-minute telephone call to Tinubu, who is in France. The U.S. Department of State spokesperson Matthew Miller in a statement said Blinken spoke with the president-elect on Tuesday. The development came 24 hours after Joe Biden administration announced the imposition of visa restrictions on Nigerians who allegedly disrupted the recently concluded elections. But dismayed by Blinken's communication with Tinubu, the PDP standard bearer Atiku Abubakar, who is challenging the ex legal state governor's victory at the tribunal, said the Secretary of State's assurance of bilateral cooperation contradicted the position of the U.S. on the general election in Nigeria. Also, the chief spokesman for OB Dirty Presidential Campaign Council, Yunu Satanko, said it was worrisome for Blinken to be discussing bilateral relationship with Tinubu. During the phone conversation, Blinken said he was committed to further strengthening the U.S. Nigeria partnership with the incoming administration of the president elect. The federal government yesterday disclosed that it is taking urgent steps to address the high burden of hypertension in the country. It stated that it has instituted several strategic interventions at the tertiary, secondary, and primary healthcare levels with the target of screening at least 80% of the eligible population and placing 80% of people with hypertension on standard treatment and care. The Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Ehanere, who made this known in Abuja during the commemoration of this year's World Hypertension Day with the team, measure your blood pressure accurately, control it, live longer, revealed that several studies and surveys in Nigeria put the prevalence of hypertension in excess of 30%. The minister noted that hypertension is preventable and can easily be detected and treated, adding that its control is paramount in reducing the burden of cardiovascular disease in the country. And on the foreign scene, Ukraine's capital, Kiev, have been attacked from the air by Russia for the ninth time this month. Kiev's military administration said preliminary information indicated all incoming missiles have been destroyed. Speaking before the all-clear was given, Kiev's mayor, Vitaly Ketliko, said a fire had broken out in a garage in the Danitsia area of Kiev, but added no one have been injured. The head of Kiev's civilian military administration said a heavy missile attack have been launched from Russian strategic bombers over the Caspian Sea. Meanwhile, on Wednesday, Ukraine's foreign minister, Dmytro Kuleba, met with a Chinese diplomat in Kiev and rejected any peace plan which would involve them giving up territory to Russia. But an agreement following Ukraine to export Millions of tons of grain through the Black Sea have been extended for two months, the day before it was due to expire. And in sports, Manchester City are through to the final of the Champions League after a 4-0 mauling of Real Madrid in the second leg of the semi-final secured a 5-1 aggregate win. Bernardo Silva scored twice in the first half as Pep Guardiola's side overwhelmed the defending champions. Carlo Ancelotti's team tried to rally after the break, but... Elda Melitio's own goal and Julian Alvarez's stoppage time finish only reflected the golf in class. The fantastic form that has seen City go 23 games unbeaten winning their last 15 at the Etihad Stadium was far too good for Real Madrid. Manchester City will now play Inter Milan in the Champions League final in Istanbul on June 10. 
With the sport news, we've come to the end of our bulletin for today. You can follow us on our social media handles at Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Unity Radio FM TV respectively. You can also watch us live on the satellite decoder Badrasat, which has been watched in about 38 countries of the world free. You can also watch us and stream us live on our YouTube channel at Unity FM TV. I am Ruka Yetsani Ibrahim. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of our programs. Do have yourself a lovely day. I was the head boy in my primary school, senior prefect and best graduating student in my secondary school, but drug abuse almost ruined my life. I was on an average of two grams of cocaine per day. I was taking eight amples of pentazosine daily. European shisha, cocaine. I became a user, a dealer and a gangster. I saw other users drowning. I knew I didn't want to be like them, but I was already trapped. My family disowned me. My employment was terminated. I sold my car, sold my house. I'll go out well-dressed and return shoeless, shirtless in exchange for drugs. I was seeing things that were not real and I won't stab myself because I felt something crawling under my skin. I contacted NDLA and started therapy. I spent three months in therapy. I spent eight months. It's easy to relapse, but your mind has to be stronger than the cravings. Drugs are does not love you. You are not the one using drugs. Drugs are the one using you. Say no to drug abuse. Unity. Unity.